Welcome back, Brilliant Nation, to another episode of my Better Than Adventure Minecraft playthrough. Today, as I'm sure you can see by the title, I'll be giving a rant on Modern Survivor. If you don't know what this is, Survivor is one of the oldest reality shows or game shows, whatever you want to call it, in the United States. The premise is kind of simple. You take 16 to 20 people, put them on an island, and they have to survive there for 39 days. In the new versions, they change it to 26 days, but we'll get to that. Every three or so days, they have to vote one of the people off of the island. Once it gets down to like the final two or three people left in the game, they bring like the most recently eliminated people back into the game, and then those people who have been eliminated get to vote for who they think should be the winner, the sole survivor. And then the winner gets uh, like a million dollars. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool game show. I've watched it for years. It's probably one of my favorite shows of all time, honestly. And the... What the... Where... Where did my hotbar go? I need a... F oh my god. If you hit tab... You like cycle through your hotbar. Uh, as I was saying, it's one of my favorite shows of all time. And even though this is kind of going to be like a criticism of Mind Survivor, it still is really good in my opinion. I still watch it regularly. I'll probably be watching the newest season when this video comes out. I'm currently working on a video about one of these Survivor seasons because I think it is a really interesting story. And overall, I think it's a good show. And it's even been better than it has been in previous years. If you talk to a Survivor fan, they're probably going to tell you that. The like seasons 34 through 30 through 40 was like the worst era of the show. Or one of the worst eras of the show in general. And this like 41, 42, 43, 44 seasons have generally been better than that. Now with that being said, there are some criticisms of the show now that I kinda wanna get into. Talk about why I feel like how these aspects of the show have gone downhill since Survivor has entered its newest age. One of the biggest issues I have with the show now. And this is something that will be hard to explain if you're not like a big Survivor fan. Is that they? I feel like the edit of the show spends way too much time trying to hide the winner. And it becomes such a point where you try to make the winner a surprise that oftentimes the conclusion is not very satisfying at the end. This has kind of happened in all of the past four seasons. Uh, spoilers for these mine seasons, but like in 41, you have Erica as the winner, and Berica like barely gets any screen time in the first few episodes. She's barely shown off as like a person in the first half of the season, and really only becomes a major player in the show after Shan goes home. Because Shan was like the major strategic force up until that point, and then it becomes Erica. But even because she was so under-edited, it really took a lot of people off guard when she won. I kind of saw it coming at that point, but I knew a lot of people in my family who weren't that into Survivor who were very surprised that Xander didn't win. And this has happened every single season since then. You know, Mary Ann was not a very big strategic force in 42. Which I think she was probably one of the most predictable winners though, because after, after Jonathan went, or not Jonathan, after Omar went home, she really was like the standout player. That was like the final episode people realized that she was going to win. 43 and 44 though, I was convinced up until the votes were read that it was going to be a different winner. I thought Cassidy was winning 43 and I thought Carolyn was winning 44. I thought Cassidy was winning 43 because they made Gabler come off as such a, like, a doofus and someone who didn't really understand what was happening in the game outside of that one vote for I believe her name was Ellie or something. But even then, it was like a pretty ridiculous vote. Gabler openly talking about how he wants to get a member of his tribe eliminated from the game. And I mean, it worked. But like, I I just saw thought he had zero chance of winning after that thing because it just made him seem so unlikable. But in reality, he was this like very likable old guy. They liked having him around. He had some strategic prowess. And he just played a better game than Cassidy. It just wasn't communicated well in the edit that that is what was happening because from what I think they wanted to hide Gabler as the winner. Same thing in 44 where it was kind of the opposite. Carolyn is somebody who you would think would be edited kind of like a doofus 
but actually wasn't and seemed to have more strategic knowledge of what was going on. And you have people like uh, Franny, I believe was her name, say like, oh, Carolyn is literally my favorite person I've ever met. She's an inspiration to me. I love her so much. I hope she wins this game. So I'm like, oh, okay. Carolyn's winning if she gets to the end. Carolyn gets to the end, and what happens? She gets zero votes, I'm pretty sure. Not even Franny, the person who supported her throughout the entire game, votes for her to win. Actually, wait. I'm gonna make this one thicker. And I'm just like, well, cool. Jam Jam won. I like Jam Jam. I thought he would play a good game. Now that I know that Carolyn's not gonna win. But like, why spend so much time trying to hype Carolyn up if you're, she doesn't actually, isn't actually that good? If she's a no vote finalist. Like, I get it now. But comparing Nora's edit to Carolyn's edit is just so weird. Because both of them probably played similar games. But one was edited like a doofus and the other was edited like a uh, inspiration. And I think part of the answer could be that they, didn't, they felt bad for how they treated people like Nora in the past. And wanted to kind of like redeem themselves with Carolyn. And make her seem more of like a normal person, not just a doofus. But like... He doesn't win. Don't make the audience think she has a chance at winning if she gets zero votes. There comes a point where it's detracting from Jam Jam and his story when you're hyping these people up. This problem could also have been a reaction to previous seasons where they, the Survivor fans complained how obvious the winner was. Uh, like 39, it has kind of like one of the most obvious and predictable winners ever. And like, I tried to deny it at the time because I was a Dean fan, but like looking back, it's just, yeah, nobody was ever winning that season other than the guy who won. Is there smooth stone slabs in this? I'll check right uh, real quick. You know, if not, I'll make the roof granite. Now, my second issue with these uh, new seasons is that the casts are too likable, which might sound like a stupid complaint at first. It's like, you go into a job interview, what's your biggest weakness? I'm too personal with people, I get to know people too well, I'm too nice. But what I mean by that is that uh, Survivor is supposed to be like a dramatic show. You are literally starving these adults for a month, or close to it in new seasons. Like, people are not really watching because they want to see inspirational moments and people fight through like, come together all the time. That stuff is fine, like, every once in a while, but everything has to be done in, like, moderation, right? So I remember a season, like, Worlds Apart, which I haven't really watched it in the past, you know, maybe 10 years or something like that. But then there was a season that was filled with drama, and it was kind of controversial because of that. You had people, like, even being, like, sexist to each other and stuff. But at the same time, it made for some pretty entertaining moments. And at the end of the season, the people who did act mean and were sexist to the woman in the show, they got what was coming to them. They lost the game. Rodney lost fire really embarrassingly. Will got owned by Shireen in front of the jury and be only Rodney felt like voting for him, like a pity vote. And then uh, Dan, Dan Foley, just got embarrassed time over after time on public television. And it made for a in my opinion, a riveting story, even if there are parts of it where, like, yeah, the Rodney's not a good person, I'm sure. And in every season, there are going to be fights between players, you know? They're literally cyber. But there's just so much emphasis now on, like, making sure everybody's friends with each other and showing how Survivor brings two pe people together and doesn't tear them apart. When this just, like, isn't really the case. I remember back when 42 was Aaron, there was like a series of big blind sides in a row. And they were all portrayed in the season as while these were all like huge blind sides, it was all in good fun. Nobody really cared that much. They all respected each other's game. And uh, the people who kept committing these blind sides was this guy named Omer. And he kept on, you know, getting credit for it. Because these were all good moves. And people were like, oh, well, I'm going to vote for you then. Only it turns out after the season, a lot of these people actually were very pissed at Omer that they had been betrayed by him. They were voted out when they thought other people were going to be voted out. And uh, apparently after the game, he was like shunned socially by some people because they were just so, so mad. 
And to me, that would have been more interesting to see than just a bunch of people being kumbaya with each other, especially when that just wasn't the case. I know Survivor is like a reality TV show and they're always going to like stretch the truth and stuff. But sometimes it's stuff I can excuse for the sake of entertainment. But this is like making stuff less entertaining to try and like have a good message across. Now this kind of ties into another uh, big problem I have. And this, I literally just said what the problem is. It's just that the producers are purposely, or editors too, like are not giving the audience all of the information that goes into making decisions. And this has kind of been the problem since Survivor 40. I remember watching that season, there were some tribal councils that to this day, I still have no idea why the votes went the way they went. It made no sense to me. Watching the show in real time, and years after the fact, and after reading some stuff, I still don't really get it. But like now, they are even leaving out like items or advantages people find in the game that do have an effect on how people play just because they think it doesn't fit this the story they want to tell the big example here is again in 42 which in my opinion is the weakest of all these seasons even though it's uh, might be a controversial opinion where omer the guy i just mentioned had found an idol nullifier unbeknownst to us during the game and he planned to play it on one of his allies who was going to hold on to his idol until the final five so he could get voted out. And there was literally a time in the show where that person gives his idol to Omer for a specified reason. And at that point it's like, oh, well, Omer just won the game there. He can just keep the idol, be a little uh, bitch, not give it back, not hold up his end of the bargain, and then just make it to the final three. Because he had the resources too, but he gives it back because he had the idol nullifier and knew that he could just nullify it at the end. Now he ends up getting blood out himself before he gets the chance to use this. But it's never revealed to us that he had the idol nullifier at any point during the season. So the move just makes no sense if you watch the season without any extra context. You just think, oh, Omer for some reason makes this really big oversight even though he'd been the best player up until this point. There might be more examples of this happening. That's the only one I'm aware of. I wouldn't be surprised if there was more, but honestly, I also wouldn't be that surprised if there wasn't. But I feel like as more advantages are going to be added to the game, there's going to be more cases like this where they don't end up actually being used so the producers feel like they can just not include them in the story. When in the reality is they do have a big, they do contribute a lot to the story of the, sh the show, the season. And by not including them makes certain moments make less sense to viewers. Now, the last complaint I have is that the games are too short. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it used to be for the first 40 seasons of the show, minus season 2, which is 3 episodes, 3 days longer, I mean. All of these seasons lasted 39 days. So I was sneaking. But yeah, they all lasted 39 days and over a month of these people just surviving in the wilderness like going insane basically now the game has been shortened by like 30 percent where it's 26 days and at first i was like well this isn't gonna really contribute that much to the show because like as a viewer we see all these moments happen on our tv screens only one hour like one hour of the show translates to like three in-game days there aren't the less episodes now it's just more condensed so i'm like okay whatever they're probably doing this because of COVID. It doesn't matter too much. But in reality, these, because the game goes by so much quicker now, it is having an effect on the game. I've seen people talk about how at the end of 39 days, like a month and an extra like 10 days basically go by, these people are like at their lowest point ever. They're like struggling to think, think straight. They've had all these bonds they've made for the past month that now they might have to start to break and modern survivor they're, they're, these people are so struggling obviously but they haven't gone through like the huge emotional turmoil of having to betray somebody you've just spent the past 35 days working with or make it to your 36th day on just two cups of rice per day the physical toll just simply is not what it once was on these players
this is I, I do admit this sounds kind of psychopathic to say I want the survivor players to like suffer more. But like it does contribute to the show. A lot of what makes the end game of the show so fun is that these people truly are fighting for their life. Or act like because they've been broken down so much. Um to be honest, I think that kind of wraps up everything I want to say. There are a few things that I could also mention. No, I don't really like how they keep on repeating Fiji as a location for a new season, but like that's never gonna change. It's been that's been talked about to death. They've really uh, been ten seasons now in the same location. I'm gonna try to finish building up this wall, and then I should probably end this episode. No, I use an extra extra piece of coal when I didn't have to. This is the last episode I'm recording in this like series of eight or nine. Uh, so I might not record another thing for a month because I just have enough content. And for short, oh, God damn it. if you have any questions for me, uh, or any, have any suggestions for video topics, have anything I want to talk about, let me know in the comments. Let me know what they think in general of this series if they want me to continue. Anything I can improve on. I know my microphone quality kind of sucks, but that's kind of... I use the same microphone for all my videos, but when I do it, like pre-recorded, scripted, everything, I have the opportunity to go back and re-record the lines I don't like. And like recently, I've been recording like pretty much all my lines three or four times just so I can use the best takes. Here, everything is just off the cuff. And that means if like my microphone spazzes out for a second, if something goes wrong, it goes wrong. One, two, three, four. Let's go finish off this bill. Oh. I didn't even finish the bill, I still need to make the windows and stuff, but that's uh, that's another time. That's the next episode. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.